In this lecture, we'll talk about structural elements, anchor tags and links, email links, and HTML validation. Structural elements are the tags that control the overall layout of your page and divide your page into the major different sections that you have. So this is BYU Hawaii's homepage right here, and we can look at the major elements on this page. First, we have the header up here um, that identifies the site. It usually has some sort of logo in there. And in this case, it has a search um, bar and some other links to some things. So this would be considered the header. And the second uh, major element of this page is the navigation right here. The navigation is a bunch of links, uh, in this case, a bunch of links to different uh, pages throughout the site of BYU Hawaii's site. And so this would be considered the navigation area. Next, we have the main content section right here. Um, and we can see that um, it, it, it also has some navigation in here, but that's just a, a page on this home page. Um, and we also have the calendar and stuff. But I'm going to consider all of this the main content of the page. Now this bar right here might be considered some sub navigation. So we have our main navigation up here the sub navigation right here. It's actually more of a duplicate of this up here. Um, and then down at the bottom we have the footer of the page. Um, identifies uh, just some uh, information, a uh, contact to us. Um, usually when there's a privacy policy you have a link to that down here. Um, as, long, as long as uh, terms and conditions, um, some copyright information, and um, other stuff. So um, Every site usually has these main areas, the header, the navigation area, the main content area, and then at the bottom a footer with some uh, copyright and additional information. So um, when we create our web pages, we should have uh, those main sections within our page. And as of HTML5, we we're giving tags to be able to uh, identify these main sections. And this is a great improvement on HTML because it allows us to um, describe our content a lot better. Um, before we just had a, a div tag or a section tag that sectioned it off, but we weren't able to say, hey, this is the header, this is the navigation area, and this is um, the content area or a section in our page, and this is our footer. But as of HTML5, they've introduced new tags that help us describe our page better. Now these tags don't really do anything different other than they help uh, describe our page better. But they all will act exactly the same and in fact we won't um, see them on our page initially until we start styling them up. But they do create boxes and the boxes will just go all the way across the page. So um, let's get started learning uh, these structural elements. So to start this off I've included the basic HTML starter template right here that you've seen in other videos. I've just added one attribute right here on the HTML tag that I didn't have in previous uh, in the previous videos. And this is the language attribute, and it identifies what language the web page is written written in. And so this uh, identifies that this is an English page. Um, if you want to look up the code for your language and put it in there, you can. But make sure you also uh, create your web page in your language as well. But for the assignments for this class, we want the, all the web pages to be in English so that we can grade them. But if you do want to create a web page in a different language, then you would put a different language code right here. Now this is different than the character set because uh, multiple languages share the same character set. For example, English and Spanish have basically all the same characters. Spanish has a few additional uh, characters with accents and stuff like that. but. Um, it would use the same character set, the same ASCII character set. So um, the, we, this would be the same if we're doing a Spanish page, but this would uh, be different up here. So now let's get started with structural elements on our page. And from our previous uh, discussion earlier in this lecture, we note, noted that there's a header on every web page. And the header is usually the first element on the page, so we should put that at the top. Then we have navigation, and so this uh, is a nav tag, short for navigation, right here. And then we also have a section for our main content. And then lastly we have the footer of our page 
which is used to include copyright information or links to um, maybe about pages and contact us and our privacy policy and stuff like that. So every, um, every website should have these main uh, areas right here and usually these areas right here are the same and these are the same on every page within a website and the content in between these section tags changes. So that way it looks like you're on the same site, but as you browse through the, the site, um, it looks the same, so you know that you're at the same place, but it has new content in the page. So if we save this page and we um, load it up into a browser, and as you can see, there's nothing on the page. Well, there's no text inside of this body tag right here. I need to make sure I have the closing body element right there. There is uh, no text right here, and since there's no text, um, nothing shows up. So these tags just create boxes. So if we could imagine we'd have our header box right here, we'd have our navigation box, and a section box underneath that, and the footer box underneath that. So I'll go ahead and just put some text inside of these so we can see um, how it looks. Call this name and the footer right there. So we refresh and now we have the header, the navigation, the main content, and the footer. And if you notice these are all on new lines and as we decide how this page is going to look we can uh, do a lot with these. We can change the background of the header and the navigation to be different than the main content and the footer. Um, we can center the text in the center of the page. We can put space in between these, space them out a little bit more, and, um, and lots of other stuff that we can do. Um, so let's go ahead and put some uh, some usual content that we have in here so that we can um, make this page uh, a little more personal. So I'll snap my fingers and do that. So now I have uh, put inside of my header the uh, title of my site, which is called Cool Site. So that's the title, it probably should be up here, but I'm just uh, doing this to demonstrate structural elements. And then I have some navigation, and I've just put text in here because we haven't talked about links yet. We'll talk about them later on. So I've just put text that will eventually become links to different pages within my site. And then um, we have uh, this section right here. I've included my main header tag called Welcome to Cool Site. And this site will demonstrate how structural tags are used to separate the different sections of the page. And then in my footer, I put a copyright 2013 by me. So let's see how this looks. And there we go, right here. So now we have welcome to our cool site. And then uh, how this, uh, the paragraph right here, down here we have our footer. And then up here we have our navigation. And this will be our um, header right here with uh, hopefully our site logo. Um, every site usually has a logo and they always put that up in the header. So now we can see how the structural tags, they don't really, uh, do much other than separate our content. We can't see them, but they do, inside of our um, code, they do identify um, what the text is inside of it or what is contained inside of it. So there is one more um, structural tag, and that's a div tag. And the div tag, before HTML5, all of these would be a div tag instead of uh, the different names. They, um, header tag didn't exist and the nav tag didn't exist and the footer tag wasn't there in the section tag they were all div tags so when do we use a div tag versus a section tag um, hopefully you know to use a header tag to, for your header and a footer tag for your footer and a navigation tag or a nav tag for your navigation so when would you use a div tag versus a section tag because we can have more than one section in our page we can have maybe an introduction section, and then we can have a, more of a demonstration section or a photo section or something like that. So when would we use a div tag? Well, um, sometimes we want to group content together and we want to style the content alike, but we don't want to style everything. We just want the content that we want to group together, but it isn't necessarily a new section on a web page. That's when we use a div tag. So essentially, if it's not a header, not navigation, not a section, not a footer, um, then we would use a div tag. So for example, um, below this paragraph, if I have um, some photos here, right here, 
and uh, with the captions and it goes with this uh, this uh, content section inside of here it, it is part of it but I want to style it and maybe move it in a different spot in my web page then that's why I would decide to use a div tag so now we have all of our structural tags um, usually most sites will only have one or most web pages will only have one header tag and one footer tag one or two navigation tags and now be careful this should only be navigation if we just link to another page or something like that we don't need a navigation uh, tag around it this is just to highlight our main site navigation and we might also have some sub navigation that we won't want to put in a nav tag so only one or two nav tags and then section tags we might have multiple section tags and we might have a lot of div tags to kind of separate our content and style uh, certain things different ways so let's see how this page looks and right now this uh, shows up below but when we worry about how this page looks then we can maybe take this and kind of put it up over here so we can kind of get some pictures over on this side or we can take it and put it here and have this move over this way so there's certain things that we can do once we group things together next we'll talk about links and links are what you click on to go to other pages and they're created with an anchor tag so um, when we put an anchor tag in with just a abbreviation of an a we have a required um, attribute called an href and href is short for hyper reference and then um, we also have an ending anchor tag and what goes in between is the text that you want to show up on the page so if we're going to link to lds.org I may say LDS church site right here and then um, the reference is the URL of the page you want it to link to so we need to start it with the HTTP colon slash slash and then we can go www.lds.org and when we put that in there we can refresh and you notice we have the link to the LDS.org church site and we click on it and we go there so um, I click back and now I'm back on our page and um, this is a, called an absolute reference so an absolute reference starts with HTTP colon slash slash and you need to do an absolute reference whenever you have a link to another site and when I mean a link to another site that means a link to another domain name uh, right here so um, anything that comes before the first slash well after these two slashes anything that would come before so if we were linking to a specific page we would have content in here but anything that comes before the first slash is the domain name and if it's a do different domain name you always have to use an absolute uh, link just like that okay so I'll fix this link so that it still works and um, we can link to any site that we want to and any page that we want to we just need to put the correct URL right here and if you're browsing the internet and you want to link to a certain page you can just go up to your uh, to your URL at the top and select it all copy and paste it and put it right in here between the eight in, in between the quotes on the href so that's an absolute link now let's talk about relative links so to explain relative links we're gonna have to look at the file structure now relative links are links that allow you to link to pages within your own site you cannot use relative links to link to other sites you can only uh, use relative links to link to pages within your own site so that means they have to be at the same domain name so since lds.org is not our domain name that we'll use and we can't use a relative link to link to lds.org and like I said before we need to know about the rep the um, file structure and what I mean by the file structure are the folders and directory or directories that we have so right now I, I created a folder and I put my web page inside of that folder so the folder is called the root so you can imagine this being your root uh, web root directory right here and then inside of it we have another directory called the relative right here and there's no files in relative but I'll go ahead and snap my fingers and create a web page within this relative directory so the first thing I did is I created a new directory called the relative and I placed that directory inside of my root directory right here so now I have uh, my in relative directory and inside of or inside of that I put an HTML file called in relative 
when we look on this, look at this, it just says in relative right here. And then I also created one web page that's not in the relative directory, it's in the root directory, the same directory that my structure.html file is in. So I have uh, these three HTML files, two of them in the root directory, and one of them inside of the relative directory right here. So going back to our uh, structure.html um, file, we can add a link to the, the in root file right here. So I'll put that link inside of a paragraph tag and we'll go ahead and add in the href right here and this anchor tag and we'll call this in root right here. So we have a link to in root and there's two ways we can do it. First of all we can uh, do an absolute link. So this is um, like we did before. I'm just copying and pasting the URL of the current page that I'm on and instead of structure I'm calling it in root. So this, um, even though this uh, starts as a file, normally if it was on the web it'd, it'd start with an HTTP uh, right there, but um, since it starts at a file it, and it has the colon slash slash at the beginning, this is an absolute link right here. So we can always use absolute links to link to our page. So we'll refresh and we have this right here and we click on it and we go to the in root. That's using an absolute path. There's a shortcut that we can do and since they're in the same directory, since structure and in root are in the same directory, I can just put the name of the file.html right there and they're in the same directory so it should be able to find it. So I'll go back we refresh, we can view our page source, and right here we see that it says in root right there. So we can just click on this link, and if you notice the URL change to go right to that directory. So that's a shortcut. If it's in the same directory, you just need to put the name of the document. Now what if we have it in a sub in a directory in another directory? So we have this in relative page. If we want to link to that from the structure page right here, we can still do an absolute or, or a relative link, but we just need to include the name of the directory. So now we have the name of the directory, and then we can go slash in relative HTML. And I'll put in relative right here. And then we'll go back to this page and refresh it to make sure we got the latest version. And now we have this in relative. And now you can see that we're at the root, the relative, and the in relative.html. So those are relative links. But now if I'm in this in relative.html, if I want to link to, say, structure.html on this page, put that link in there. If I want to link to um, something that's in a directory up above us, so it, we're in the relative right here, but we want to go up one directory and then link to this page right here. Um, there's a couple ways we can do that. We can do dot dot slash structure. So this means up one directory and then um, this will go up one directory and then find a look for files in there. So let's see how this works. And so now we have this structure and then notice we got rid of the relative in my URL right here and we went to the structure right there. To demonstrate some more stuff about relative links, um, we need to be on an actual web server. So I'm back here on a cPanel on the web server that we're using and right here I'm gonna open up my file manager. And remember there's a home directory right here. And when we go to the home directory, we have a web directory right here. And remember these two are the same directory. They have the same names. And um, right here, I wanna first pay, have you pay attention to this file called index.html right here. Now I'll go ahead and code edit that. And if you notice that's right in my public HTML directory and I have a file named index.html. I'll go ahead and code edit that so that you can see what's in it. And as you can see, it just says home page. It has a home page on here and a few links. 
So when I type in my domain name right here, I get my web page right here. And if you notice, I didn't type index.html on the end of this, it just automatically pulled it up. That's because when a file is named index.html, it becomes the default file for that folder or for that directory. So that, since this is the default file for the public HTML directory right here, when we um, go right, right to our uh, the web root, it'll look for that index.html, and if it exists, it pulls that up. If it doesn't, we just get a list of files in that directory. And so let's go back to the file manager. And I also have this relative directory right here. And inside of there, I have an index.html inside of that relative directory. And I have an in relative.html file inside of there. So um, I have I have four pages here to, to work with. The first one is index.html. Then I have in root.html. And then in the relative directory, I have index.html inside of there and in relative right there. So if we go back to this page right here, this is my home page. I have a link to the relative directory and um, I'll click on that and it pulls up the default file inside of that relative directory. So this is the index.html page inside of the relative directory. I also have a link to the in relative page. So notice I'm in the relative directory and I have a link to the in relative page. And then if I go back, I have the in root link that pulls up the other file that's in the same folder that the index.html file, the original one is. So going back to my public HTML directory, that last link I clicked on loaded up this. So let's look at the source code and see how those links worked. Since it's in the same directory, we have the in root right here. And the in root is in the same directory, the same public HTML directory. And then we have relative right here. And so that replaces this part of the URL with relative. So then we go to the relative directory, which has a default document, the index.html page in that directory. And that's how I got that page to pull up. And then um, lastly, I have a link to the in relative.html page right here. And this pulls up um, the, that in relative page. If you notice, I have this right here. So what do we put right here? Um, first of all, you can always experiment. So you could type in whatever you want right here, and then you'll um, see your page. Let's go back. You'll see your links. You could go ahead and click on them and see what they do to the URL up above. So that's one way to just experiment. If your URL up here isn't right, then you didn't put the right uh, information inside of the href. So that's always a good way to check. And go ahead and experiment around with that and play with it until you have a good understanding of how these links work. So um, the uh, basic information, um, the basic thing that you need to know is if it does not have a slash or an HTTP colon uh, slash slash at the beginning, then it starts from the directory that you're in. Now it doesn't start with the file, it starts from the directory that you're in. So we're in the public HTML directory, and then it's going to start looking for files inside of that directory. So the in root has to be inside of the public HTML directory. This relative must be inside of the public HTML directory as well. Now this relative slash in relative, so there better be a relative directory inside of public HTML, and there should be a in relative.html inside of that directory. So, um, Hopefully um, there'll be some uh, written documentation that you can read about this um, for further, further clarification on how these links work. And again, the best way to learn about it is just practice by putting things in here, clicking on links, and seeing what shows up right here. The last uh, thing I want to show about this is this in relative page. I have a few links that I have right here. And let's go ahead and go to that page right here. So it's in the relative directory, and then I have the in relative.html, so we can code edit that right here. And now that we have the code editor right here, we have the in relative page up here. And if you notice, 
um, this first link just has a slash, and the slash goes to the root of their domain. So let's see what that page does. If you notice, it takes off everything off of the end, and it just goes right to the basic domain right there. So that's the, what the slash will do. So it basically starts it over at the web root. And then let's look at the second link. Right here we have the in root right here. So the slash starts it back up at the public HTML directory, which is our web root. So it'll start it over. So if it starts with a slash, it'll start it over, and then we can look in the in root.html directory right there. And then we um, have a slash relative, so that starts it over again, and it puts it back into the relative directory. So it starts with this page, it starts it over right here, so it starts it right back at the web root, and then it looks for a page called, or a page or folder called relative, and it finds relative and then inside of relative, we have the index.html, which is the default document for that directory. So um, those are uh, relative paths. It might take a little bit getting used to. So if uh, the video didn't, didn't clear all of your confusion up, make sure you read about it. And then just practice. You can't break anything by putting stuff in here. Just try doing different things and seeing what happens to your URL up there. One other thing to mention about these files, uh, or the file names, is it case does matter. That means it matters whether you use capital letters or lowercase letters. First of all, I'm not sure if this uh, index.html page would work if you were to use capital letters. So if you were to capitalize the I right here, you might not get this page to pull up automatically. So make sure it's all lowercase letters. Another common mistake is to not have the extension be a .html. Um, it sometimes it's .text or something like that. And if it's not .html, then you uh, won't see a web page. You'll just see your source code when you go to visit the web page. So make sure you name it .html. And as I was saying before, case does matter. So if I were to capitalize these, uh, anything in here, when I were to link to them, in certain pages, they better be the same case. So if I used a capital I at the beginning, then the file should have a capital I at the beginning there. So for me, just to prevent any confusion or trouble, I just leave everything lowercase. I just use all lowercase, I have leave my files all lowercase, and then I know when I link to them, I leave them all lowercase. And uh, that works a lot better than trying to remember what case it is. And a lot of times you forget that case that the case is important, whether you use uppercase letters or lowercase letters. And so that could be uh, a struggle right there. So just use lowercase letters and it should save you some time. Another thing is spaces do not work well with web addresses. You can't uh, type in spaces in some browsers. They won't let you type a space in the in the address bar up here. So that means you can't put spaces in your file names. If you notice, all of my file names don't have spaces. And you also um, shouldn't put spaces in your folder names as well. So spaces don't work well. And um, I would recommend only using lowercase letters. So the last thing we'll cover in this lecture is uh, markup validation. So the reason why you want to validate your web pages is because if they're not uh, perfectly validated, that means you broke some of the rules of HTML. And when you break the rules of HTML, web browsers are really nice and try to guess about what you mean. The problem is, is that Firefox might guess differently than, say, Internet Explorer. So then your web page will not look the same in each one of those web browsers. So it's really important to validate your web pages. So for all of your assignments, from here on out, you'll need to have valid um, web pages. So you can validate your web pages by going to validator.w3.org. And um, if you go to that URL, then you can um, take your URL that you want to validate. So this is the index.html page on relative. And I can copy that URL. And I can paste it in here, just like this. And I can check it. And then we'll see whether we have a valid web page or not. So if you look right here, I have one error. And the one error says the character encoding was not declared. 
So when you not what that's uh, telling me is if I go back to the file and we're in the relative directory right here and um, the page that we were validating is relative so that's this index.html we can code edit it right here and the reason why that didn't work is we didn't have the char set set on this right here so if we put this in and we save the changes and we also might want to put a language right here and we'll put the English language and we'll save the changes and then after we save the changes we can click our revalidate button right here so that's HTML validation. Again, the URL is validator.w3.org. Now, some of those messages might not make a lot of sense. So a couple of uh, tips right here. I'll just show you. Um, one thing that might happen is that you might forget to put your end body tag, or you might not have a slash to end your body tag. So now you have two body start tags. So that's something that will cause a few errors, so we can revalidate. And now we see that we have one error and it, it, a body start tag scene, but an element of the same type was already open. So what is that saying is, well, I, find a, I found a body tag, but you already have a body tag up here. So that's what that error means. Another common mistake is to start including HTML or uh, text before you uh, close your head tags. So if we were to accidentally include some text here, just like that and we're to revalidate right here notice that created a lot of errors right there um, and if we read all of these errors first of all element head is missing and um, is required of the title so basically it's like wait the title isn't there um, this can't be here um, the end, straight end head tag, a body tag, start tag is seen, but it was already open. So to fix those errors, whenever you get errors, always try to fix the first error that you see. And one thing that happens is if we have text up here, the browser is going to start automatically assuming, well, here's the start of the HTML. And so the validator will start assuming, well, all of this stuff right here must uh, should have been in the body section because we're starting to see this so it'll, it'll close our head tag and start including all of this and create a body tag and start um, putting all of that in it's just really confused when you do that so um, that's one error to uh, take out um, we'll hopefully have some more information on how you can fix your validation errors but uh, just uh, be really careful and you can always google your errors and to see uh, Google means to search, so you can always search on the web your errors that you have. And, and when you search, then you might be able to find some uh, ways that you can fix those errors. And um, you can always, um, if you can't find a solution, you can always uh, ask the professor to look at uh, some of your uh, HTML validation.